By supporting our channel you support legal content on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell and leave a like. We wish you a pleasant viewing. Few forests have roots so deeply entwined in human history. The aged woodlands around the warm Mediterranean Sea, where ancient civilizations imagined their savage deities. The fragrances of resin, rock rose and thyme would have swirled around the Olympus of the gods. Drawn from the plants that blanket the soft, sandy earth by a relentless sun beating down on Mediterranean pine forests. The home of the ancient Mediterranean gods is adorned with trees and bushes where almost mythological animals also make their home. A habitat where salt water, lush pines and warm white sand coexist. The same fauna that springs to life in ancient bestiaries, chronicles, and legends. The fauna of the Garden of the Gods. The most archetypal of Mediterranean climates, warm and benign, extends from the Spanish coastlines to the Black Sea. Its pine forests reach into the Middle East, Greece, Turkey and North Africa. But it's along the coasts of Andalusia that their dimensions and extraordinary richness are most notable. The Mediterranean Sea defines its own climate, characterized by long hot summers, short springs, and explosive and temperate winters. What's more, rains are usually scarce. In this luminous environment, the native fauna moves between different ecosystems, sometimes hidden among the branches of the coastal forests. At other times, silently skimming across the sand. Or splashing in the fresh water that springs up in the heart of the forest. Trees, and specifically pine trees, dominate the coasts around the sea, defining the landscape. Now, high in the canopy, white storks put the finishing touches to their nests and prepare for a romantic ritual. Both adults collaborate in making the home. And at the beginning of spring, their arresting calls provide the soundtrack to life in the pine forest. Mm -hmm. 
Mediterranean pine trees can grow at the very edge of the sea, sprouting from among the rocks or emerging through the sand of the beaches. The pine forests of the Mediterranean are the landscapes in which some of the most universal myths were born, telling stories of a host of wild animals that even today, with greater or lesser burdens, recall the curious narratives of thousands of years ago. Mediterranean pine forests are forests of legends, where reality and imagination combine. Greek and Roman gods wore light clothing as a measure to combat the heat of the Mediterranean ecosystem. It averages around 20 degrees Celsius through the year, but can reach 40 degrees in the summer. It is this that makes possible here the rich and varied fauna of reptiles, including tortoises, snakes, and the less than common, common chameleon. It's in these pine groves that the only chameleon resident in Europe can be found. Legends deem the chameleon a sun worshipper, one who keeps his face forever turned towards the bright star. It is true that chameleons need to start each day by allowing their bodies to reach the temperature that activates their metabolism, and that means searching for quiet, open clearings, ideal for sunbathing. The old chronicles also claim that they feed only on air, which would be a tremendous relief for the insects, but the reality is that they are terrific hunters of flies, grasshoppers, and other airborne invertebrates. The largest, toughest beetles are not on the chameleon's menu. This is the case of blaps and other tenebrioninae. These dry pine woods are their paradise. Dozens of species of beetles swarm through the pine forests. Like for the storks, it's now the crucial time for reproduction, when food is abundant and temperatures favorable. This is an ideal and varied environment for the desert-loving beetles, located as it is between fossil dunes, gentle hills, and oftentimes murky freshwater lagoons that add to the humidity. The lagoons are found in lowland areas, protected by the pines, and attract a wide community of birds. Flamingos exploit the richness of these waters. Nutrients derived from the pine forest contribute to the complex food chain that supports the existence of millions of small crustaceans, the basic diet of the flamingos. But at the start of spring, the flamingos are more concerned with mating than eating. At certain moments of amorous frenzy, they dance, a stunning choreography of flutters and rhythmic moves.
the flamingos show off in all their finery, a fiery, resplendent plumage. It's not surprising that in antiquity, they were thought of much like the phoenix, sun worshippers that could be reborn from their own ashes. The dimensions of the pine forests and the magnificent size of some of their trees allows for another mythical bird to dwell here. The Spanish imperial eagle builds its nest in the quietest corners of the great forest. The imperial eagle is the apex predator of this ecosystem. The ancient civilizations that settled around the Mediterranean found in the eagle the perfect symbol of power and associated it with the god Jupiter. The monarch of these skies flies above the Mediterranean habitats hunting rabbits, hares and other birds. The Greeks knew of its prodigious eyesight, and the Romans took it as a symbol of their legions, adorning their banners with its image. Today, other legions, those of pines, still stand guard close to the sea. The large pine forest beetles, the blaps, venturing through them when the heat wanes a little. Both pine trees and beetles are well adapted to this dry environment. The pines can withstand heat and drought thanks to their deep reaching roots and their needle like leaves, an adaptation that reduces water loss. Blaps have a thick protective cuticle and only set out when temperatures drop. Just like the rest of the fauna of the Mediterranean pine forest, they have their own legends. In their case, it's the unjust fame of being animals of ill omen, perhaps for being associated with inhospitable, desert-like places. However, Blaps and the rest of their family of Tenebrioninae play a vital role in these dry ecosystems, as they both eliminate an infinite amount of detritus and are the basis of the food of many reptiles and birds. And there are certainly genuinely harmful insects in these woodlands. The caterpillar of the pine processionary moth exploits the young pines, eating them virtually into destruction. These caterpillars eat only the needles of the Mediterranean pines. They feed on nothing else. When they've finished with one tree, they move on to another in long, snaking caravans composed of many individuals. The hairs of the processionary caterpillar are highly irritating to the touch and protect them from possible enemies. During the day, the caterpillars prepare their silky nests to shelter from the sun and from possible attacks. They seem to think themselves invulnerable. But they do have unexpected enemies. and their nests are not impregnable fortresses. Tiny, lethal, parasitic wasps make their way into the silken tents and lay their eggs on the caterpillars while they rest. The 
wasps have small ovipositors with which they place their eggs one by one on the sleeping caterpillars. Branches of the pine trees are home to other colonies of much larger dimensions. Storks and herons build enormous nests up in the branches. Storks have been admired from the remotest antiquity for their dedication to their nests and, more importantly, to their offspring. It's not hard to see why they became an example of good morals and paternal love. What's more, they were known to hunt harmful animals. In fact, storks exploit all aspects of the ecosystem. They have no need of venturing far from this garden of the gods and come and go between the pines and the lagoons where they find food in abundance. Frogs and insects are no match for the stork's combination of lethal eye and bill. The storks share the lagoons with the striking spoonbills, who have their own special way of fishing in the muddy waters. Unlike the storks, their eyesight is not especially acute. Instead, their bill is highly sensitive, with thousands of nerve endings at the widest part that allow them to detect possible prey in the water. By simply moving their head from side to side, they soon come into contact with a tasty aquatic morsel. The spoonbills also form highly populated colonies among the pine branches nearby, often coinciding with the storks and herons. And they all share a common danger brought by the wind. These coastal pine forests live under the constant, silent menace of the moving dunes. Dunes and pine trees locked in a dramatic struggle in which the trees try to fix the sand and secure it eternally. But the sand pushed in from the sea wants to advance ever forward. The sand dunes can always count on the wind, their powerful ally, to aid their progress. In some areas, the sand builds up and little by little will bury the pines, eventually killing them. But these are Pyrrhic victories, as new pine trees will emerge to try to immobilize the dunes. It's against this dramatic backdrop that the Montpellier snake wends its way, looking for rodents and other tiny vertebrates to eat.
For ancient civilizations, the snake was the representation of all evil, able to find and kill chicks of birds as venerable as the spoonbills. It's not unusual for some snakes to climb trees to reach the chicks. But the young birds are usually safe there, hidden among the branches, waiting for the food that their parents will bring. In their turn, storks, which travel all over this habitat, also hunt snakes. In ancient Greece, so the legend goes, whoever killed a stork was sentenced to death. And so, to keep itself safe, the Montpellier snake, unique to this Mediterranean ecosystem and an important link in the food chain, prefers to hide. One of the inhabitants of this region that has no fear of snakes is the commanding Imperial Eagle. Up in the pines, the chicks are growing quickly. Hunting has been successful with abundant prey this spring, and this adult pair has been able to raise two chicks. This is a huge success for such an endangered species. Parent imperial eagles will look after their offspring until they can hunt for themselves. Their mother still tears up and feeds the meat to her chicks. Below the eagle's formidable nest, on the floor of the pine forest, a nervous European polecat may end up in the claws of the imperial eagle if it doesn't take precautions. So it won't leave its hiding place except at dawn or dusk with its sinuous movements. The sandy soil allows it to excavate a deep and secure den. For polecats, the pine forests are almost perfect places to live, with abundant and varied food resources that include insects and fruit. And after exploring its territory, and before the heat becomes too oppressive, it can return to the safety of its burrow to doze. Some of the pine forest's nocturnal birds of prey pose a real danger to the polecat. This long-eared owl, however, is not one of them, as he's too small to risk an attack. The nocturnal birds of this mythical forest also have their own legends. They've always been associated with omens and fortune-telling. It's true that they have very acute senses that allow them to move through the darkness in an almost magical way, catching a few mice, shrews or voles by surprise every night. The long-eared owls dwell among the stone pines, Aleppo pines and maritime pines, the trees that can best tolerate such sandy soils and frequent droughts. These are the best equipped for this harsh weather and poor soil. More fortunate pines grow near the permanent lagoons.
Here, the flamingos filter the tiny creatures that swarm in the water with their curious bills. Their robust, fleshy tongues work as a pump or plunger, and flamingo tongue was considered a most exquisite delicacy by the ancient Romans. Fortunately for the flamingos, tastes change, and that culinary craze has passed. After feeding, the flamingos will fly tens and even hundreds of kilometers to return to their colony, and their chicks will feed on a special pulpy secretion produced by their parents' digestive system. It may seem that time stands still in the Mediterranean pine forests. These warm and beautiful gardens that were once the dwelling place of the gods and which remain immutable throughout the year. But the truth is very different. The imperial eagle chicks have grown and can already hunt their own prey. Despite being increasingly under threat, the Mediterranean pine forests offer them everything they need to live. In these forests of unchanging appearance, delicious fragrances and ancient legends, unique ecosystems are preserved populated by almost mythological beings. A unique collection of wildlife inhabiting, somewhere between legend and reality, the Garden of the Gods. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and comment. Support legal content on YouTube.